We have this lovely prayer we recite right after kindling the Hanukkah flames. Haneres halalu anachnu madlikin ala nisim v'ala nefloyes v'ala truas v'ala melchamas shal sisala v'oseina b'yama mehem b'zman azah. These candles we light to commemorate the miracles and the wonders and the help that you, God, have done for our forefathers in the days of yore, during this time of the year. There are three terms we use here to describe the miracles of Hanukkah. Nisim, Niflaot, and Shuot. Miracles, wonders, and salvation help. Are they just repetitious? Or are they saying different things? Why do we employ three different terms? And why this particular order? You see, there are three types of experiences that people have in life. The first is called chuois, which means the help of God. The 49ers are having a football match against the Patriots. Who wins? If one of them wins, if the 49ers win, and I'm not taking sides here, if the 49ers win, you're not going to call it a stupendous miracle, an extraordinary wonder. Both teams are great. Sometimes this team wins, sometimes this team wins. Some people may call it mazel luck. And we call it teshua. God helped this team win. Two people are applying for a job. We both given a resume. Who gets the job? I can get the job. You can get the job. It's not a miracle if you get it or I get it. Our resumes are equal. There's no reason I should get it any more than you. If I do get it, we call it teshua. God helped me get this job. But then there's something else in life. This is called nisim, miracles. Sometimes events happen to you that are inexplicable, right? Sometimes doctors will say, this is a medical miracle. Scientifically, we can't explain it. If I'm having a wrestling match, not against one person, but against 50 people, and I win, that's miraculous. If an army of 3,000 defeat an army close to 100,000, that is what we call a miracle, a supernatural event. And then there are those experiences in life we call niflaos, wonders. It's not that statistically it's impossible, but it's rare. You'll say this was a rare coincidence. Was it a miracle? Was it completely beyond the realm of nature? It was not, but it's wondrous. That's why we use these three terms when we light the Hanukkah candles because the events of Hanukkah consisted of all three of them. The tyranny of the Syrian Greeks against the Jewish people was so barbaric and so sadistic. The evil was beyond description, trying to uproot through the most repulsive of means, the last vestige of Jewish faith, Jewish tradition and Jewish practice. What ultimately caused the Hashmanayim to revolt? Matisio from the family of the high priest. He observed a Jewish Hellenist who was an accomplice of the Syrian Greeks, helping them murder Jews, build an altar, and sacrifice a pig to the statue of the Syrian Greek emperor Antiochus. Matisio could not hold back anymore. He killed this Jew. This is how the Hanukkah revolt began. The fact that he was successful this is called Teshua. He could have been killed. Yet, he survived. For this he had God's help. But then, the Greek Syrian army mobilized en masse. Now you had a few thousand Jews confronting the best army of the time, close to 100,000 troops, with the most sophisticated weaponry of the time. The Jews won. The few defeated the many. This was a nest. This was an extraordinary miracle. And then they rededicated the temple. They cleansed the temple from all the desecration and the impurity. But they couldn't find a single jug of oil that was ritually pure to kindle the menorah. And then they found one jug of oil that was untouched by the Greeks. This was not a miracle. But it was a pellet, it was nifla, it was niflois, it was a wonder. And then many more miracles happened. The oil burned for eight days, etc., etc. And that's why we speak about all three. There were the Nisim, great miracles. There were the Niflois, the wonders, but there were also the Teshuas. And this explains a fascinating anomaly. The source of Aneris Halalu is in Tractate Masech de Sofrim. And there the order is, Haneris Halalu Onumadlikin, Al Hatshuos, Val Anisim, Val Haniflois. 
We kindle the flames for the Chuos, Nisim, and the Flies. Why that order? Because chronologically, we are commemorating the events, and that's the order in which they happen. First the Chuos, then the Nisim, and then the Niflos. And this will explain finally why in some of the prayer books, you have it in the tour, you have it in the prayer book of the Balatanya, you have a very interesting switch. In the beginning of the prayer, it says, Haneris alalu on amadlikin, ala chuais, al hanisim val haniflois. At the end, la hoidais ola hale le shimcha hagado, al ni secha val niflois, secha val yeshua secha. We light these candles to sing the praises of your great name for your miracles, for your wonders, and for your help. In most prayer books, the order in the beginning and at the end is uniform. But in some of them, it changes from the beginning to the end. Why the switch? Because in the beginning, we're talking about the chronological events. We light these candles for the chuois, for the nisim and the nefloyas. At the end, we speak about our sense of gratitude. Our sense of gratitude comes first and foremost for the miracles of our life. Nisecha. Then they're extended to the niflois in our life, to all those wondrous experiences and coincidences in life. And finally, we thank God, Al Yeshua Secha, for the natural day-to-day -day occurrences that even though they seem so natural, we know that nothing happens without divine assistance. Every breath we take, every move we make, we say, thank you, Hashem. Happy Hanukkah. The Yeshiva.net